Hello and welcome to the lecture series on monetary economics. In the previous classes, we have seen the definition of a bank. Then we moved on to build our idea of what a commercial bank means. And then we have seen the various functions rendered by a bank and then moved on to the two main functions of a bank that is the primary functions as well as the secondary functions. Under that, we looked at the sub classifications of the same. So today I have for you the structure of a commercial bank in India. So let us look at how the structure of commercial banks in India will look like. Now the commercial banks has been classified into four distinct pillars. Now the first pillar is represented by the public sector banks. Then the second pillar is represented by the private sector banks. Then we have something called as the foreign sector banks and then the regional rural banks. Let us now look at public sector banks first. So what are public sector banks? The so public sector banks are those banks in which the majority of the stakeholder is the government. Now, for any entity to be the majority of stakeholder, it has to have minimum 51% of the shares of or, or the stakes in that particular financial institution. So therefore, whenever we have 51% of the stakes owned by the government of that particular country, then you can call such a bank to be a public sector bank. The remaining shares which are 49% can be held by either individuals or a group of individuals and or a combination of anything else. So this is how you look at a bank to be a public sector bank. Now the public sector banks can be understood from two distinct angles or dimensions. The first is called as the state bank of India and its associates and the other is all the other public sector banks in India to be very precise or any other nationalized bank in India to be very precise. Now why state bank of India and its associates? are given so much of importance is because it is one of the best bank in the world as well as it is the best bank in India. So if you look at the rankings of the State Bank of India, it is amongst the top 50 in the world. So that is why it requires greater attention. So now to look at State Bank of India, we'll have to look at its historical background. So I'll take you to the historical background of State Bank of India and then you will realize that why public sector banks that to State Bank of India deserves greater attention or greater details. So if you go back to the British times, you have Bank of Kolkata, which was established in 1806. Then we have Bank of Bombay, which was established in 1840. And then we have Bank of Madras, which was established in 1843. Now these three banks were serving to the three port cities in India, which were primarily centers of British trade. So what happened is these three banks were amalgamated or they were uh, clubbed together to form something called as the Imperial Bank of India in 1921. Now this Imperial Bank of India worked till 1955 and then later it was converted into something called as the State Bank of India. So therefore State Bank of India was formed in 1955. So this is the history behind the State Bank of India, which is the three, pre these, were, these banks were called as Presidency Banks. Presidency Banks, that is the Bombay Presidency, the Kolkata Presidency and the Madras Presidency and these banks were amalgamated in 1921 to form Imperial Bank of India and this Imperial Bank of India was later converted into State Bank of India. So that is why State Bank of India has been in India since time immemorial if you see in that particular sense yeah, and it also holds majority of the uh, government of India shares and that is why we treat it as a public sector bank. There are different other banks like Bank of Baroda, you have uh, Punjab National Bank, you have plethora of them. So these banks are studied under other public sector banks. So I hope the idea of public sector is pretty much clear. Let us now move to something called as private sector banks. Now, whenever the majority of stakes are held by an individual or group of individuals, then it is called as a private sector bank. Now, when you look at private sector banks, we have Axis Bank in India. Yeah, Axis Bank is a private sector bank. There are n number of banks which are there. Then we have old and new distinction, which I'll be talking about in greater details in the upcoming lectures. I'll be also talking about the structure of uh, private sector banks and all of that. Yeah, so please stay tuned for that. But just to give you a preliminary sense, a private sector bank is the one in which an individual or group of individuals hold majority of the stakes. Let us know. I hope this idea is pretty much clear. Let us now look into what is a foreign bank. Now, foreign banks are those banks in which or whose headquarters are established in any other country. For example, Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation. 
so they have their headquarters outside india and not particularly in india but they are taking license from the reserve bank of india and operating as a financial institution in india therefore you treat them as foreign banks so any bank which has its headquarters not in india but out of india you treat that bank as a foreign bank so there are plethora of examples the first is hsbc which is hong kong and shanghai banking corporation then you have city bank then you have royal bank of scotland which is from uk then you have dosh bank which is a german bank so these are the n number of examples in which you can understand uh, foreign sector banks so i hope this idea is pretty much clear then we have something called as the regional rural banks i'll be talking about regional rural banks and the classification of the same in greater details in the upcoming lectures so i hope on a very uh, superficial or or, or uh, scale the skeleton or the idea of what are public sector banks private sector banks foreign banks and regional rural banks is pretty much clear under commercial banks so this was just an idea of the structure of commercial banking in india i'll be talking about all of these in greater details in the upcoming lectures so please stay tuned thank you